Okay, there we go. So part one, find the exact value, do not use the calculator. Seems redundant that it says don't use the calculator here. And already said up there, no calculator, but anyway. So uh, fi find, that. so the part one will be a bunch of trigonometry questions with no calculator. But you will put, I'm assuming you're going to take that unit circle, right? And put that right on your 3 by 5 card. Draw that thing right on your 3 by. i I'd, I'd probably let one whole side of my card be that unit circle. Let me go, in fact, grab that unit circle, wherever that thing is. Come here, unit circle. Unit circle. There it is. Okay, so that unit circle. So, all right, cosine 8 pi over 3. How do we do it? So 8 pi over 3 is not on my unit circle, is it? There's no 8 pi over 3 here. What do I need to do with 8 pi over 3? Got to subtract some 2 pi's because it's more than one full circle. That's correct, yeah. So take that 8 pi over 3 and subtract some full circles. So take 8 pi over 3 and subtract 2 pi, right? And what do you get? Yeah. Uh, oh, and if you, if, maybe you'd prefer just to change to degrees, whichever. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just keep it in pi for now. Either way, it's totally fine. Whatever's easier for you. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 3 to get common denominator here. 8 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, which leaves 2 pi over 3. Is that good? Like that? Mm -hmm. Or, if you wanted, you could take the 8 pi over 3, and, and what do you put in for pi? 180 degrees. Remember, pi is 180. So it's 8 times 180 over 3. That'd be 480 degrees. You with me? I'll show two different ways. So you could just stay in radians, stay in the pi stuff, stay in the radians, and just subtract one full circle, get a common denominator, get 2 pi over 3, and then go to the, go to the unit circle, find 2 pi over 3. Or... You could just stick a 180 in for pi. Remember, pi is always 180. Remember on the unit circle? Pi is 180. So just put a 180 in for pi. Hit the buttons on your calculator. That'll be 480 degrees. That's more than 360. So subtract 360, and you'll get 120. So 120 is the degrees. 2 pi over 3 is the radians. They're the same spot on the unit circle. So you could do either one of those and then go find that spot. They are one spot. Here we go. 2 pi over 3 or 120? So where is it? It's not here. Uh, 2 pi over 3, 120. There's 120. 2 pi over 3. See, it's the same exact spot. Either way you want to find it. There it is. It's this dot right here. Remember, cosine is always first. Sine is always second. They want a cosine, right? Yeah, cosine. So cosine is... Watch out. The negatives are... The only thing I don't like about this I got off the internet is the negatives are small. So, so look at that. I wish they would have made the negatives bigger. Otherwise, this is a perfect... Unit circle chart, I think. Negative a half. So the answer is negative a half. There it is. Negative a half on the unit circle. Just like that. That okay? Everybody see how I found it there? 120, 2 pi over 3. So either convert to degrees by putting in 180 for pi or stay in radians, either one. All right, how about 570? Cotan. 570. Let's do that one. So 570, again, we're going to subtract 360, huh? Subtract 3, what is that, 210, 210 degrees? Okay, and then cotan is what over what? Do you remember? Does anybody remember what cotan is? Cosine over sine. Cosine over sine. Yeah, you want to have those definitions on your 3 by 5 card. Yeah, so have those, have those right. Tangent is... Sine over cosine. Cotan is upside down of that, right? So cosine over sine at 210 degrees. So go find cosine over sine. Get this out of the way here. Cosine over sine at 210 degrees on the unit circle. So go to 210. 210 is right here. Here's cosine. Here's sine. So cosine, sine. Negative root 3 over 2 over negative a half. Everybody see how I found it at 210? Cosine over sine. Negative root 3 over 2 over negative a half, right? Negative root 3 over 2 over negative half. You know the drill. Take the half, flip it up. The two negatives cancel. Root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1, they cancel. The answer is just root 3, isn't it? So it's just B root 3.
that good for doing the trig angles? No calculator, just use your unit circle? Yeah? Will we, will we be able to have a unit circle? Got to write it on your 3x5 on your card. Yeah, put that on your 3x5 card for the exam. No questions? Yeah, I'd make it one whole side of the 3x5 card. Okay, so cosine of pi over 3, tangent of 5 pi over 3. So, um, <clears throat> go, you can just go look them up. Cosine of pi over 3, tangent 5 over 3. So, on oh, this one, tangent, as you know, is sine over cosine. So, go to the inner circle. Now, now we're looking for pi over 3. Pi over 3, which is right here. Again, the first one, x is cosine, y is sine, right? x is cosine, y is sine. So cosine's a half. So cosine's a half. And then sine of 5 pi, now we're going to 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 is here. So cosine, sine. Cosine's a half. Sine's negative root 3 over 2. Cosine, so cosine on the bottom's a half. Sine on the top is negative root 3 over 2. We good to there? Sine... Over cosine. Good to there. So take that half on the bottom. What do we do with it? Flip it up. Eight times two over one. Two's cancel. So. So what? So then we get. I'm bringing it over here. A half plus, or actually become minus. Won't it? Whatever, plus negative root 3. We good so far? These twos canceled here. Now, I don't see that answer there. Should I do none of the above? Mm -hmm. No. They combined them. See how this is one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction? That means they combined them. They didn't leave them as two separate things. They put them together, didn't they? So, what am I going to do? I've got to, I've got to combine them as well. So I'm going to combine them, and so that means put this guy here over one, multiply top and bottom by two, and I get a half plus negative two root three over two. So put that together: one minus two root three all over two. There it is, combined with a common denominator. Does that make sense? Still not there. After all that, it's still not there. Well, the hint was negative square root three. There's no negative in the equation. Yeah. Any of the top equations. No, right. None of the above. It's a little disturbing. Is that the right answer? You guys have the answers in front of you, right? That is. That's it. Um, None of the above. Uh, yeah, but but on the real test though that we take uh, Tuesday, you might you know you have to go. I just want to make sure you know how to combine them. Is that good? And it might be there. All right. Um, Okay, number four. So tangent is negative 15 eighths. Theta is there. Find the cosine. How do we do this one? I do not remember. This is the, this is the draw both four and five. Yeah, so there will be two of them. I thought there'd be two. Yeah, these are super important. These are draw the triangle in the right quadrant and do the whole thing. Samantha, cheer them on hard. Going to the finals in American River. Have fun. Thank you. All right. So, uh, so we draw that triangle in the fourth quadrant, right? Theta is between 270 and 360. 270 and 360. It's in the fourth quadrant, right? We good there? So, so go ahead. Draw yourself a... Let me give you just a second to start it. Draw yourself a triangle in that fourth quadrant and make the tangent of theta be negative 15 over 8. <coughs> and then find the third side by the Pythagorean, and then you can find the third side. All right, so when I, 
if I did this, I'm really going to get messed up. Why? What's wrong with that right there? It's on the y-axis instead of the x. So everybody hearing me on that? You, you have to put the angle here and make the triangle go to the x-axis, not the y, because that's a reference angle. Right? You have to go to the x-axis. Whatever quadrant you're in, you always make the triangle go to the x-axis, not the y. Why? Because that makes it, uh, in, because the zero degrees is right here, and angles in the first quadrant are off the x-axis originally. That makes it the same as the reference angle. Same as the original angle off of zero degrees. Okay, so there's theta. It's got to be off the x-axis. So now the tangent of theta is negative 15 over 8. So what is tangent? Remember Sokotoa? Tangent is opposite over adjacent, huh? So here's, here's angle theta. This, this is the hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. This side is adjacent because it's next to the theta. Adjacent means next to. And this side is opposite because it's across from theta, right? So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tangent equals, oops, let me get scribbly there. Tangent is negative 15 over 8, opposite over adjacent. So 15 is the opposite. 8 is the adjacent. Don't worry about the negative. We can fix the signs later. Or you can tell, really, which one of those is, if you, if you want to do the signs now, you could. Which one of those is actually negative? 15. Think about it. Over 8, what? <clears throat> Down 15. That one's clearly the negative one. But, again, you could just ignore it and fix the signs later. Good so far? Everybody see how I did that? This made a triangle to the x-axis. You always make it to the x-axis. And then the tangent is opposite over adjacent, 15 over 8. Now find the hypotenuse by the Pythagorean theorem. And so that would be 8, call this C, A, B, C. 8 squared plus 15 squared. doesn't matter if I make minus 15 squared, same thing. Is C squared. A squared plus B squared is C squared. So that's what, 64 plus 225 is C squared, 289 is C squared, root it, root it, 17, right? C is 17. Isn't that what your calculator tells you? C is 17. So now we're ready to find cosine of theta. So what's the cosine of theta? What's cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. 8 over 17. Everybody seeing that? But careful, make sure the last thing, make sure you've got the sign right. You know, how do, how do we do the signs? All students take calculus. That tells you which trig functions are positive in which quadrants. Uh, so in the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. So this is, is positive, 8 17 Yep, there it is. Positive. So always check the last thing, check the sign. With all students take calculus, you're in the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. Everybody okay with that? Remember how to do that? Question? Oh, that's a little bit challenging, huh? Yeah. So how can you know that square root of 2a minus 8? Don't you know that one? No. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little challenging, I know. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. You, you should probably look over at the 17 and let that, and then go, oh, maybe that's 17, and then take 17 times 17, 49, 11, add a 0, 1, 7, go, oh, yeah, yeah, 289. Is that too much? Is that asking too much? Nah, you can do that. You guys want to go into higher division math and science, right? So you can do that. All right. Yeah, hope, yeah. I think you can do that. So, all right. We'll go on. Let's try number five. There we go. Try number five. Cosine of theta is two fifths, tangent of theta less than zero. Find the sign. First thing you gotta do is figure out which quadrant that's in. So, 
So they're telling what is, what is which quadrant is this? All students take calculus. Which quadrant are we in? Cosine is what? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. And tangent is what? Negative. Negative. So cosine is positive. Tangent is negative. So, so we're not here because tangent would be positive there. We're not here because they're all positive there. We're not here either because tangent, I'm sorry, because cosine would be negative, right? Because this means only sine is positive. Cosine would be negative there, but he's positive. So we're in the, we're in the fourth again. We're where cosine is positive, but the other four are negative, including tangent. Cosine and his upside down secant are the only positive ones there. Okay, so we're in the fourth. We're again in the fourth. So make your angle, make your theta angle on the x-axis. Theta right there. the x-axis, and then put the cosine fact in there. So we've got the Sokotoa. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent over hypotenuse, 2 or 5. So, oh, from theta, this is the hypotenuse, this is adjacent, this is opposite. So adjacent, so 2 over 5, so 2 over 5. Adjacent over hypotenuse, like that. That good? Let me stop right there for to See how I did that fact? Cosine from Sokotoa, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 2 over 5. And I always write in adjacent opposite hypotenuse, so I know which is which. So I've got to find this side. So the C is the 5. The A squared plus B squared is C squared. The C is the 5. So here we go. So 2 squared, call this B or whatever, plus B squared is 5 squared. 4 plus B squared is 25. Subtract 4, b squared is 21, root it, root it, b is the square root of 21. b is the square root of 21. Alright, so b is the square root of 21. That good? To there? And then, what's their question? Find the sign. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite, square root of 21. Over hypotenuse, 5. Oh, but double check the sign. Right? All students take calculus. So we're here in the fourth quadrant. The only function that's positive is cosine and his upside down secant are positive. The other four are negative, so sine must be negative. Negative root 21 over 5. There it is. Is that okay? Questions I can answer on that? Doing those triangles? All right, we'll move ahead to number. Okay, so, so, cotan, what's the definite, what's cotan, what over what? Cosine. cosine over sine. So they're just making sure you know that. Cosine over sine. So root 15 over 4, over 1 over 4, grab it, flip it up, root 15 over 4 times 4 over 1, they cancel, root 15, there it is, good, am I getting all the answers right so far, let me know if there's a wrong answer, I mean it's the first time I've done this practice, so there might be a wrong answer, good, moving on, you're okay. Okay, so we've got y equals x squared minus 13, and x squared plus y squared is 25. <clears throat> so these are challenging. What, what should we do? I don't think that's a good plan. No. We want to do substitution, right? So we want to grab that first one. 
and plug it in right there. Because y is x squared minus 13, right? So you remember, these are substitutions. You plug one equation into the other. These are fairly challenging. So we get x squared plus, and then this will be x squared minus 13 squared is 25. Do you all see that OK? How are we doing? We all see that? So then that's x squared plus x squared minus 13 times x squared minus 13. And that's boom and a boom. x to the fourth minus 13x squared minus 13x squared plus 169 is 25. Comes a big mess, huh? Like you can do it the other way. Like you can do it like x squared equal to y plus thirteen, and you look that. Oh, that is easier. A lot better. A lot yeah. better. I like your plan. Yeah. I'm going to finish up this way, but that's a good thought. I see what you mean. That would be better. All right, let's keep going. So I've got. Um, so now I'm going to put them in order. The most powerful term first, x to the fourth. Then 1x squared minus 13 minus 13 is minus 26. So 1 minus 26 is minus 25x squared. Plus 169 is 25. Everybody see what happened there? Gathered like terms. I, I combined the x squared terms, right? 1x squared minus 26x squared is minus 25x squared. And then subtract 25 from both sides. And I get x to the fourth minus 25x squared plus 144 equals 0. Doing okay. How many to go to fresh green? You've got to factor that now. Got to factor that. So. So you got to say, what are two numbers that multiply to be 144 and add to be 25? So you got to take your calculator. Oh, you have no calculator on this part. No oh, this would be a hard one without a calculator, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this would be definitely a hard one. Are you thinking of 9 times 16? Maybe not so much, huh? That's the pair. But I know I do this for a living day and night constantly, so you're probably not thinking of those numbers. 9 times 16 makes 144, and they can make 25. Yeah, your calculator would tell you that, you know, if you divide it. So maybe I'll have to, do maybe I'll have to double check which ones I put on the no calculator part, because that, that would be hard without a calculator, wouldn't it? All right, so let's just keep going on. That, that would be the pair the calculator would tell you. So then that would be 9 times 16. So then we would factor it, x squared minus 9, x squared minus 16. Do you all see that? Because that makes minus 25 in the middle, and they multiply to be positive. Two negatives make positive 144. And so then that's x squared minus, then you said each one equal to 0 separately, right? Let's get this out of the way. And then this would be x squared minus 9 is 0, x squared minus 16 is 0, so x squared is 9 x squared is 16. Then you root, root, plus or minus, though. Root, root, plus or minus. Don't forget the plus or minus sign when you put the root on, plus or minus. So x is plus or minus 3. x is plus or minus 4. But look, they want y. This is by far the worst way to do this problem. So we'll see the other way. will be way easier. They want y. All they gave me is y. They didn't even ask for x. They just want y. So how am I going to get y now? Plug it back in. Yeah, I can do it. I can, I can finish it. So now, take this x. Well, where do, where, if you want y, remember how this works. If you want y, the best place to plug in would be somewhere where y is already alone. If you want y, go where y is alone. Where's y alone? Right here. Y is already alone, huh? That's the easiest place to plug in. Y is x squared minus 13. Y is x squared minus 13. So take plus or minus 3. Makes no difference. It's squared. Plus or minus 3. Either way, squared is 9 for, for x squared, right? 
So then y is going to be here, 9 minus 13, negative 4. Plug it in here. Plus or minus 4 squared is going to be 16 minus 13, 3. 3, whoop, come on. 3 and negative 4. B. Whew, that was challenging, especially without a calculator. That would be challenging. Let me show the other way real quick. Y'all get that down? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Negative 4 and 3. We good? Mm -hmm. Okay. The other way, real quick. That's all. Yeah, I'll just, I got to move. So if you, did, if you missed that, it'll be on the YouTube. But the quicker way, let me redo it again real quick. I don't, I'm going to have to just fly this one out. Yeah. Um, the, the quicker way, going back here, x squared minus 13 x squared plus y squared is 25. Yeah, the better way, look, they both have an x squared. So solve for x squared in one of them and plug into the other. doesn't matter which one. So like I'll grab this first one here, and I'll just take this minus 13 and bounce it to the other side. So y plus 13 is x squared. That's a 13, and I'm scribbling. See what I did there? I just moved the minus 13 to the other side of the equal sign. So can you read all my scribbles here? So y pl x squared is y plus 13, and then grab that and put it in for x squared right there. So y plus 13, here, let me change the color, right here, this becomes y plus 13 plus y squared is 25. Do you all see that? Mm -hmm. oh, that looks much, better. much better, right? In the place of this x squared, I put y plus 13, which is what x squared is equal to from the first equation. Now it's just, yeah, much better, huh? So now we just say, oh, okay, this isn't too bad. We just have, let me reorder it. Y squared plus Y plus 13 is 25. Subtract it. You always got to get a zero, right? So Y squared plus Y minus 12 is zero. Factor it. What multiply? You don't need a calculator for this one. What multiplies to be 12? 4 and 3. And sign in the middle. Plus 1 in the middle. Plus 1. Sign in the middle always goes in the bigger. When you factor, right? Sign in the middle, sign on the bigger, plus 4, minus 3. Ta -da. And then, so y plus 4 is 0. Right? If two things times to be 0, either one can be 0 to make them times to be 0. So then y is negative 4 or positive 3. Much better, huh? I told you. No. So, I mean, thank you. Good tip. Much better way to go. So. I just took what it said equal for y and I plugged it in for two for one. All right. So that'll that'll work. Either way it'll work. So I'm gonna move on. Okay. Okay, so we have a triple here that we're solving. Um, wait, what just happened? I did the wrong one. There it is. Alright, so we're solving three equations. They want me to solve for x. Yeah. Okay, let me let me bring them over here x plus y plus z equals negative 8. Well, okay, remember, this is by hand, no calculator, right? So since they want me to solve for x, I'm not going to eliminate x right away because you want x in there. I mean, you could. It's not the end of the world, but you could be more work. So get other letters to drop out. Remember how you do these 3 by 3s? You get letters to drop out by adding them. Remember that? So look. Can I, I can take these first two equations, add them, and y's will drop out right now, huh? Get 2x plus 5z is negative 3. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Do you see what happened there? 1x and 1x made 2x. The y's dropped out. Okay, now, so that was equation 1 and equation 2. Now come over here, and let's do equation... 2, x minus y plus 4z, and equation 3. Now, why am I picking them? Because they have opposite y's in the middle, and the y's will drop out. Does everybody see how I'm choosing? I'm using this minus y here in the middle to add to the equation above it and below it and knock out the y's in both cases, right? Does everybody see what I'm doing? Do you see the strategy there? Do you see, do you see, let me, let me, let me pause. The most important, I know you can all add, subtract, and do the details. It's just, do you see how the game plan forms? You want some letter to completely drop it. It doesn't matter, X, Y, or Z, whatever. Just get somebody out of there. 
We don't want three letters, right? The way you do it then is you look and you say, well, is there a convenient way to add opposites? Yeah. In this case, there really is. That minus y in the middle is the opposite of the plus y, plus y above it and below it. So I'm using equation 2, equation 2, in both cases, aren't I? Adding to the equation above it and adding to the equation below it so that the y's drop out in both cases. And we get 3x, and this is 5z is negative 12. Good so far? Now I've got two equations with two letters. Let's put those together. Did I just mess up? Man, yeah, why did I do that? Minus 7, huh? Thank you. I noticed several of you giving a funny look. Whenever that happens, I know I'm wrong. All right, thank you. All right, so now let's put those together and um, finish this thing up. So I've got both equations now. So the first one is 2x plus 5z is minus 3. Second one is 3x plus 5z is minus 7. What would be the easy way to get something to drop out of there? One side the yeah, just make the top one negative, right? Negative, negative, positive. I just multiplied through by negative 1, basically. You with me? Mm -hmm. Negative, negative, positive. Now add them up. So 3x minus 2x, X. 1x. 5z minus 5z cancels. Plus 3 minus 7 minus 4. X is minus 4. It's none of the above. How disturbing. Is that the real answer? Okay, after all that work. <coughs> we good on that? Uh-huh. All is well? All right. So there's all your formulas right at the top that I promised, all the S sub N, A sub N. Um, notice in we have an A sub N and an S sub N. Those are both arithmetic. And over here we have a sub n, s sub n, s sub infinity. These are all geometric. Notice how they're together. Then I gave you a couple summation formulas. wonder why you need those. Hmm, I don't remember any problems with those. All right, whatever. Let's just keep cranking. Um, okay, so theater has 20 rows with 28 seats in the first row, 33 in the second, 38 in the third, and so on. How many seats in the theater? So let's, let's, let's see what they're doing. So they're saying they have 28. So this is row, first, first row. Second row has um, 33. Next row has 38. And um, how many rows? Oh, 20 rows. Them up. Total seats. All right, so that's kind of what they're saying. It's like another one of them pyramid seating kind of things, right? The rows get wider and wider as it goes back, like pyramid seating. Okay, so 28 seats, 33, 38, that, that, I don't know how many in the 20th row. Add them all up, and what's the total number of seats? Okay, so is this an arithmetic, first question to ask, what's it, what's it doing, arithmetic geometric, what's it doing from term to term? It's adding. Adding five. So that, is that arithmetic or geometric? Arithmetic. Arithmetic is adding, subtracting, right? When you learned arithmetic when you were a kid, that was adding and subtracting, right? That's why we call So that would be one of these two formulas. You with me? If it's multiplying from term to term, then that'll be the geometric formulas. We'll get to some of those. So that's the first distinction you make. The easy ones are in the beginning, arithmetic, adding, subtracting. The geometric harder ones are at the end when you multiply from term to term or divide. Okay, so I'm using one of these two. Now, which one, how do you know if you want the A sub N or the S sub N? What does S stand for? Sum. Am I summing them? Absolutely. It's plus sign. I'm adding them up, huh? So I want the S sub N. So let's write down the form. S sub N is N over 2, A1 plus A N. See how I found the right formula first off? Are we good to there? Makes sense how I'm finding that? Okay, let's crank it out now. So n over 2. What's n? n is the number of terms. Number of terms. 
A1 is the first term, AN is the last term. Remember what these mean? You could, I'd, probably a good thing to put right in your 3x5 card is what those things represent. You know, number of terms, first term, last term. So what are the number of terms? How many terms here? 20. They told me 20 rows. There's 20 terms, aren't there? What's the first term? What's A1? 28. What's the last term? I don't know. I don't know. So I've got to find it. How do you find it? It's a sub n. How do you find a sub n? You use the other formula. The a sub n formula. This is a difficult problem. You've got to use the a sub n formula now. So just put in the a sub n formula right there. It says right there that the a sub n formula is a1 plus n minus 1 d. This is this. Is that okay? A sub n is that whole formula, isn't it? So what do we have then? This is 10. This is... Let me keep it with the colors here. So this is 10, 28 plus... Okay, now, what's A1? Well, again, that's 28. Plus n minus... What's n? 20. D, what's D? It's the jump from term to term. Everybody see all that that I plugged in there? Is this confusing? It's confusing. Another way you could do this is you could just find this guy. A sub n is a1 plus n minus 1d, the nth term. You could, just, you could just do that separately instead of plugging it all right in here. Either way. Right, and you, then you would find it, a sub 1, 28, plus n, tw 20 minus 1 times d is 5, and you'd find it, 28 plus 19, plus 19 times 5, and that'd be 28 plus, what's that, 95, 128, 123, that'd come out. So you could just say, hey, this last term is 123, if you wanted. If you want to just do that instead... And just do all that work and say, look, it's 123. Maybe that'd be easier for you. This is 123. So that makes sense what I did there? Oh, is that too quick? So I did the little a sub n over here. You, by the formula, a1, 28, plus n minus 1, 20 minus 1 times 5. Worked out 123. So the last term is 123. Put that in right here. So then just finish up the problem. Add those up. What is that? 1... 51 times 10, 1510 looks like. Yep, C. Good on that. No questions? Nope. It's a little challenging. You had to find the right form of the S sub n, and then in the middle of it, we had to go get A sub n all, all the way over here and do the A sub n work. We had to use both formulas, and then we had to bring that 123 back and finish it up. That's a hard problem, for sure. All right, so it wants the 42nd term in that arithmetic sequence. So, this is the, this is the first, second, third. So, 42nd term, which formula should I use? It's arithmetic. They even say it's arithmetic. So, I know it's going to be one of these up here, one of these two arithmetic formulas, huh? Mm -hmm. One of these two arithmetic. Which one? Is it a sub n? Are we adding these up? Is there a sum here? Mm -hmm. No, there's no sum. We're not. We're just. There's just commas between them. There's not plus signs between them. We're not adding them up. So it's not s sub n. It's a sub n. So grab the a sub n formula right here. A one plus n minus one d. A1 plus n minus 1d, like that. So A1, again, that means first term, number of terms, and D stands for the jump, the difference. It stands for difference, really. The difference from term to term. So the first term is negative 5. The number of terms, what's the number of terms? 42. Yeah, remember the ordinal, I called it? I mean, that's what it is. The ordinal 42nd, 5th. You know, whenever they do that kind of thing, that's always your n. 
Whenever they do the thing implying an order, that's your n. So 42 minus 1 times d. What's the d? What's the jump from term to term? How do you get from negative 5 to negative 9? How do you get from negative 9 to negative 13? Minus 4. Minus 4. Every time you go down by 4, huh? Good, subtract 4. So, minus 5, whoops, plus 41 times minus 4, minus 164, minus 169. It's not there. It's always disturbing. Is that the right answer? Is it E? All right. None of the above. Good. Questions? We keep moving. Okay, movie theater, $8 adults, $5 adults, children, 40 people, da 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 It's a money problem. So remember, maybe you don't, uh, money problem. First one has no money at all. The second one is all about money. So I'm going to write, okay, it's number of adults plus number of children is 40. That equation has no money in it. Second equation, you bring the money in. It's $8 for each adult, $5 for each child. The total money is 272 there's our two equations. To see how I did that? That's how you always handle word problems and, well, almost always handle word problems involving money. So I have one equation, the top one, that has no money in it. It's just adults plus children, 40 people all together. The second one has the money, $8 times for each adult, $5 for each child, $272 total. Okay, so how do we solve now these two equations? you got to get something to cancel. Remember the addition method? So I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 5. Why negative 5? Because I want to make those C's be opposites. You can make the A's be opposite. You can, you can do negative 8. That would be fine. Whatever. Just get some letter to cancel. Add them up. This is 3A. These cancel. This is 72. Is that good? See how we got the C's to cancel? Then divide by 3. A is the 24. A is 24. So there's 24 adults. Answer B. So I just made the C's become opposites. That's how you handle two equations with two letters. Make, make two of them opposites so they cancel. All right, I'm going to move on. Any questions? So mixture problem. You handle those with the beakers or the buckets, whatever you want to think of them. And the, the dollars go on the bottom and the amounts on the top. So we have some dollar, a dollar eight per pound candy. We have some three dollars and five cents, more expensive, per pound candy. And we're going to mix them to form some candy that's kind of in between price. It's a mix of the cheap and expensive. 264. And then on the top go the amounts. Now they only gave me one other number. What's the other number they gave me? 24 pounds of the 264. So it goes above the 264, huh? Because they said it's 24 pounds of the 264. So what goes in these blanks? X and Y. Two letters, we need two equations, don't we? So what's the first equation? It goes right across the tops. No money. <laughs> X plus Y is 24. No, nothing to do with money, just the tops. And the second equation is multiply top and bottom. So 1.08 times X. 3.05 times y, 24 times 2.64. All right. Oh, so this is getting messy. Okay, so 24 times... I'm getting 63.36 here. 
All right, and then we got to get stuff to cancel. So I'm going to multiply the top my minus 1.08, trying to make it the opposite of the bottom. So those will cancel. So then I get minus 1.08x minus 1.08y, whatever 24 times 1.08 is, minus 25.92. And then I'm going to add that to the bottom equation. Add them up. See what we get. These will cancel. 3.05 minus 1.08, 1.97y. And this is something else, I don't know. 63.36 minus 25, 37.44. We're almost there. Last step, let's, um, let's divide by 1.97. And this is where it better come out clean, or I messed up somewhere. Uh-oh, did I mess up somewhere? Yeah, it looks like I messed up somewhere. I'm getting just over 19. It's funny, it's not exactly clean. 19, it's basically 19. So, and then, um, and that's why. Is that what they want? Is that the answer they want on this one? They say, how many pounds of the more expensive candy? How many pounds of the, which one's the more expensive candy? It's the Y. It's the $3.05 candy instead of the $1.08 candy. So that is what they want, 19. So it's, is it none of the above? Is this one none of the above also? <laughs> There's a lot of none of the above, aren't there? All right. So yet again, it's none of the above. Why is 19 and it's none of the above? Questions on that? That okay? So many none of the above. Thanks. Oh my goodness. I'm only halfway through. I gotta, I gotta hit the gas pedal here. All right. So, um, all right. They're giving me. They want. It's defined recursively. A1. So they're saying the first term is two. So A1 is two. That's the first term, as you know. And then A n. When they say A n is three. A sub n minus one plus 4. This a n minus 1, this means any term is 3 times the previous plus 4. That's what a sub n minus 1 means, previous, right? n minus 1, 1 back. So it's saying any term is 3 times the previous, add 4. That's what that little formula is saying. So you go, oh, okay. So if the first one is 2, then the next one is 3 times 2, add 4. I'm going too quick. At 6 plus 4, 10. So the next one is 10. Is that good? Any term, right? Can, can you all read this statement? It's all about being able to read that statement. Any term, the nth term is n minus 1 means 1 back, right? 3 times the previous term, add 4. That's what that's saying. So if you have 2, the next term is 3 times that, Term, add 4, get 10. Okay, so how do you do the next one? Well, the next one then, A3, will be what? 3 times the previous term, 3 times 10, now that's the previous term. 3 times the previous term, add 4, which is 34. And then how do you find, um, how do you find the fourth term? It's 3 times the previous term, which is now 34, add 4, which is some big number, 90 to 100 and 206. So there it is, 2, 10, 34, 106. Makes sense? It's all about reading this statement. Three times the previous term, add four. All right, inverse of the matrix by hand or with graphing calculator. So that's, that's a hit the buttons on the graphing calculator, right? Um, I'd be glad to go over that. I don't want to... You know, you basically, you remember, you have to enter it. You have to go second matrix, go into second matrix, and, and, and go over twice to edit, and put in, and then enter the matrix, 5, 3, 3, 2, and then quit, and then, um, <coughs> then you go back into 
second matrix again, and then you just hit, um, you, underneath A, you hit enter, just right away hit enter, and then you, back on the main screen, you hit the, um, to the negative one power, which is inverse, and you get the answer. So it's just all hit the buttons on the graphing calculator, and you should get it. And the inverse button. And I'm getting, the answer I got was 2, negative 3, negative 3, 5. So I don't know, is that A, B, C, or D, one of those? Yeah, it's C. C, it's off my screen, but it's answer C. So there's the answer. 2, negative 3, negative 3, 5. I just did it on the graph calculator. If you have any trouble with that, grab me after. Take 10 seconds, but I better move. Okay, so sixth term is 27. So um, this is arithmetic, and we're not doing a sum. So I'm going to use the a sub n is a1 plus n minus 1d, right? See, I knew that formula because if you go back to the, the first page, you know, if you go back here, whoops, I'm not rolling the screen correctly. Go back here, it's... It's one, it's one of these two, arithmetic, because they said arith and it's not a sum, so it's this one. A sub n is a1 plus n minus 1d. All right, so use that one. Six, sixth, what is that? That's n, huh? Remember, any ordinals are always n. This is also n. So a sub 6, put 6 in for n, is a1, I don't know what that is, plus n, which is 6, minus 1d. And what is a sub 6? 27. They said that the a sub 6 is 27. And then a sub 15, now n is 15, is a sub 1 plus n, now is 15 minus 1d. And a sub 15, the 15th term is negative 63. Two Wait, that might be confusing. Is the way I wrote that out confusing for you? Here, let me, let me redo it. It might be easier this way. You can just make this a 6... 27. Is that easier to look at? Plus 5d. And then side by side, I'll do the other one. Over here, a sub 15 is a1 plus 15 minus 1d. And a sub 15, they told me, is negative 63. a1 plus 14d. So put this right underneath. Negative 63 is a1 plus 14d. So we got those two equations with two letters, a1 and d. What do we do now to get things to cancel? Run a negative sign. Like make this negative, 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 add them up. This will be minus 90, huh? Minus 90. These will cancel. 14 minus 5 is 90. 9D, I should say 9D. And then divide by 9. D is negative 10. So we got D. Now we got to get A1. How do we get A1? Go wherever you want. Pick an equation. Like how about, how about that one right there? I'll just do that one. So I'm just going to put negative uh, 63 is A1 plus 14D, but I know D is negative 10. So put in a negative 10. So negative 63 is A1 plus negative 140. So add 140 to both sides. Well, I don't know what that is. Seven, is it 77? Yeah. So there it is, 77 and negative 10. Two equations, two letters, A1 and D. Is that good? I better keep moving. Okay, so now, so we're certainly going to use an S sub n, right? When you got the Greek, that's a Greek S, sigma. So we're going to use one of the S sub n formulas. But how do we know if it's arithmetic or geometric? We have two S sub n formulas. Is this arithmetic or geometric? Geometric. How do you know? Because it has K to the power. K is in the power. K 
K in power geometric. So let's go back, get the geometric. There, there it is, kind of. Can't hardly see that. There it is. There it is. Geometric, right? The geom these are the geometric ones over here. So grab the geometric S sub n, A1, 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. All right. Whoops, where are we? I've done a lot of work here. There we go. So A sub n is A1, 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. Like that. So here we go. So A1, as you know, is the first term. So what's the first term? Uh, we better crank out the first term. Bless you. So I'm going to write 1 fourth times minus 3 to the k minus 1. That's the formula. And I better find the k equals 1 first term, huh? So I'm going to plug k equals 1 in and find the first term. So it's 1 fourth. That's 1 fourth times minus 3 to the 1 minus 1 which is 1 fourth times minus 3 to the 0, which is 1 fourth times 1, which is 1 fourth. So the first term is 1 fourth. Uh, now, we got to find the R, which is the ratio. So I'm going to have to find the second term. So I know what the ratio is from term to term. So let's find the second term, k equals 2. So plug k equals 2 into this formula, 1 fourth minus 3 to the 2 minus 1, which is 1 fourth, minus 3 to the 1, which is minus 3 fourths. Good, the minus 3 goes to the top, because it's over 1. So, so, K, so minus 3 fourths, so the first term is 1 fourth, the second term, the second term is minus 3 fourths. So it's every negative 2 fourths. So what's happening from term to term? Minus 2 fourths. What do you got to do to 1 fourth to make it three, negative 3 fourths? Multiply it by, remember we're talking geometric now, not add, subtract. Multiply it by, was that a trick question? Mul what are you going to do to 1 fourth to make it negative 3 fourths? Multiply by negative 3. Multiply by negative 3, right? But if you're not sure, you can't tell just by looking like that, how can you formally find the R, remember? R is second over first. Remember, ratio, you can always take second over first. For geometric, you can just divide two terms. You'll find what's multiplying, right? If you want to know what... What times, you know, what was multiplied, you divide. That'll tell you what was multiplied, right? So second term, which is minus 3 fourths over first term, 1 fourth. Grab this, flip it up. I'm going to get the same answer. See the fourths cancel? Minus 3. So the R is minus 3. It's a lot of work here, isn't it? So times 1 minus minus 3 to the N over 1 minus minus 3. So I plugged in the R now. The R is minus 3. I plugged in the A1, which is 1 fourth. So there's the formula, except I don't know N. Do I know N? What is N? Yeah, N is right here, the number of terms. So this is 13. Okay, so there we go. Now we just got to work that out. You can just type the whole thing in your calculator, but I think it would be easier to take a couple of small steps first. Everybody good to there? Mm -hmm. All that stuff? So I'm going to need to go to a fresh screen. So I've got... What do I got? So come back to you. i got 1 fourth. So i got 1 fourth times 1 minus minus 3 to the 13th over 1 minus minus 3, I think. Yeah. Okay, I've got that. So that's S sub n. So what is that? Well, I would simplify this. Out. 1 minus minus 3 is 1 plus 3 is 4 isn't it? So, and, um, and then 4 times 4 in the bottom, 1 16th. Okay, then I would type that into my calculator. See that right there? I See how I simplified it a little bit? Type that into your calculator. Bless you. I'm getting nine nine six four five point two five. A. Hey. 
There's a lot of hard stuff on this test, huh? Hmm. All right, you guys can do this stuff. Put some time in. You can master this stuff. Questions on that? There it is. It was A. Yeah, 99-645-25. A on that one. All right, so number 17. All right, so notice it says infinite, and we see the infinite with the dot, dot, dot. 32, 8, 2, a half, dot, dot, dot. So we only have one infinite formula. If you go back, you'll see that the S sub infinity formula is A1 over 1 minus R. So let's do that. A1, what's A1? 32. How do we find the R? R is always second term over first, right? Second term over first, 8 over 32 reduces to B, 1 fourth. Now remember there's a test. You can't always use the S sub infinity formula. There's times when it diverges. Do you have that in your notes? R must be between negative 1 and positive 1. If not, it diverges. Right? R's got to be between negative 1 and positive 1. Remember, that formula is special. You can't just automatically use it. You've got to test R. Well, is R? Is 1 fourth between negative 1 and positive 1? Absolutely. 1 fourth is a fraction between negative 1 and positive 1. So, yes. It is. So, it's good. So, we can use the formula. So, what do we get then? 1 minus a fourth is 3 fourths, right? Grab that. Flip it up. So 32 times 4 thirds, this is over 1, what's that, uh, 128 thirds, there it is, converges to 128 thirds. Converges means it has an answer, it doesn't diverge, doesn't take off. Good on that, the S of infinity formula, I better move on. So there we go. So now it's a sum. So I'm certainly going to use an S sub, infi uh, S sub N formula because it's a sum. Which one? Is that arithmetic or geometric, do you think? Is, is N, N is not, not in power. So it's arithmetic, isn't it? It's not geometric. So I'll use the S sub N arithmetic formula, which is N over 2 A1 plus A N. Remember, this is the number of terms, first term, last term. So the number of terms is 32, right? The first term, now, how do I know the first term? Going to have to find it. Going to have to find it, that's right. Plug in 1, take this formula, minus 2n plus 8, plug in 1, 6. First term is 6. How do you find the last term? How do I find it? What do I do? Use the ace of n term. Plug in 32. For that. Because 32 is the last term, right? Yeah. So minus 64 plus 8, is that minus 56? Yeah, so minus... 56. So this is 16 minus 50 is like minus 800, I think. Yeah, negative 800. D it is. Good on that. So I knew it was arithmetic because n was not in power. Grab the formula, number of terms is 32. Found the first term and the last term by just plugging in 1 and 32, right? Because it goes from 1 to 32. Plug in 1, you get the first term. Plug in 32, you get the last term. First term is 6, last term is minus 56. Put them in, work it out, minus 800. All right. Uh, 19 is calculator. So let me briefly say, go second matrix. Go across twice to add, at least on the TI. And put in the matrix, enter the matrix, just the numbers. 
10, 3, minus 4, 15. No letters. Oh, not the 15, huh? Um, and 9, minus 7, 7, 3, 4, minus, this is a minus 1 here, huh? Enter, and then quit, and then go back into second matrix, go to edit, and then enter the second matrix, which would be the 15 minus 3, 12. Let this be matrix A, for example, and this be matrix B. So remember all the matrix entering stuff? So this one they want me to solve with my graphing utility. I don't want to do it by hand. It would be awful and would use all my time, and I would certainly mess up and not get the right answer. So for sure, graphing calculator. So you just enter the first matrix, the 10, 3, minus 4, you know, the left side of the equal sign. Then quit, go back into matrix, and then enter matrix B as the right side, 15 minus 3, 12. So you make the left side A, the right side B. Remember that? Let me go up here now. So after you've got A in the left side, B, matrix B is the right side. Then... Then, then, and you quit, you quit again, then you, you know, you quit after you've done that. Then you go back into second matrix yet a third time, and you just hit enter for matrix A to pop in the screen, and you just go matrix, <coughs> wait, 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 is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, matrix A, it's going to be A inverse times B. Enter A, and then go back into second matrix again, and you enter, oh, then, oh, then you hit X to the negative one power here, and then enter B, and then equals, and you get your answer. So did you follow all those steps? So it's all been done before, it's all on YouTube. I'll do it real quick and get an answer here, second matrix, edit, three by three, So notice this inverse, A inverse times, then go back into second matrix, go down to B, enter. So A inverse times B, enter, uh, and what do they want? X, they just want X. I got the answer on my screen, my little, I just did it all, and I got the answer 1.032.3. Three seven nine. Yeah, they went on and on and on, and point six two oh six. Blah blah blah. Did you guys get those? So they want x, which is the first one because this is x y z. One point oh three. It's not there. Another none of the above. Is that right? Is that the answer. Nineteen is e. Yes. Okay. In the yeah. Did I? Did I mess up? Anybody else getting this answer? I don't know. I don't have any Yeah? Answer. Okay, you guys are getting the answer. Okay. So I put C on the answer sheet. It's the wrong answer. Oh, okay. Messed up. Should be, let me write that down. I'll try to fix it. And so that should be 1.03. 1.03. Questions on that. Is that making sense? So 19. The answer X should be 1.03. Not C. All right. Is that good? Any questions? So feel free to grab me if you have trouble doing these things on your calculator. Okay, I'm going to say calculator. Graphing utility. I, I did them all earlier. Type them all in and then just do this. Put in A, B, and C into your graphing calculator and then just literally do that. Hit the enter button and get the answer. Come see me if you have any trouble. Go look at the old YouTubes. So this one, I'm going to say calculator. Again, let, let this one be A, 
Let this one be B, and then just go A times B and hit equals on your graphing calculator. Come see me if you have any trouble. Let's go to 22. Determine whether the given thing is arithmetic, geometric. Okay. 22. Okay, so they're giving me 4, 6, 9, 13, da, da, da. How do you determine, given a sequence like that, if it's arithmetic, geometric, or what it is? You look at the jump from term to term. What's the jump from 4 to 6? Add 2. What's this? Add 3. Add 4. So which one is it? Arithmetic, geometric, neither? Neither. You need to add the exact same number every time or multiply the exact same number, not a changing number. That's a neither. 23. Find the formula for the nth term. So they're giving me a sub 4 is negative 54 and r is negative 3. Geometric. They tell me right there it's geometric. So I'm going to use the a sub n formula for geometric, which is a1 times r to the n minus 1. If you go back to the formula sheet, you know, the very top of the test, you get the geometric a sub n, it's right there. So, right, because they're all a sub n and it's geometric, so you know which one you need. All right, so they're telling me that a sub 4 is a1 times r. Well, I know what r is. That's negative 3 to the n minus 1, but n is 4. You're tracking with me. I just put in the n slot 4, so put in that n slot 4 also, right? So I just plugged in n is 4 n is 4, and r is negative 3. And they told me that a sub 4, this, is negative 54. And this would be 4 minus 1, 3. Good to there? So negative 54 is a1 times minus 27, huh? Negative 3 cubed. So that's one step away. Divide by minus 27. A1 must be 2, right? A1 is 2. So which one of those has a 2 in the front? It's that one. Can you see it? Remember how the formula is? A sub n is A1, R to the n minus 1. So that's your 2. We already know R was negative 3. So there it is. Good. Two more. Three more. So 24. So 24. 2, minus 6, 18, blah, blah, blah. What's happening from term to term? It says geometric right there. It's going times negative 3, times negative 3. So that's my R, huh? So, and they want, what do they want? They want the A sub N for geometrics. So that's the one we just did. A1, R to the N minus 1. So the A1 is 2. The R is negative 3 to the N minus 1. Well, that was easy. Let's see. All right, 25 and 26 are binomial. We just did that last week, so feel free to look back at that.